Hello and welcome to Google Next 2021. My name is Sandra Rivera, head of the Data Center and AI Group at Intel. It's a privilege to participate in this event with Dr. Geraldine von der Ora from the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard to share how we're working together to create innovative solutions for the healthcare industry. Google Cloud and Intel have collaborated together for more than 10 years, driving consistent improvements for our customers. Google was an early adopter of Xeon scalable processors for their cloud services, and it was in no small part because of the speed of integration of new technology, acceleration engines, and application optimizations that are pervasive on Xeon platforms. When we partner with organizations like the Broad Institute on their infrastructure and solution requirements, our goal is to help them optimize and get the most out of their cloud workloads so that they can focus on solving complex problems in life sciences and genomics research. One way we've done this is through our Intel Select Solutions program, where we collaborate closely on workload requirements to build platforms with verified hardware and software stacks that are optimized across compute, storage, and networking resources. Built on Xeon scalable processors, Intel Select Solutions help ensure partners like the Broad Institute get the performance they require when they need it most. And with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Von der Ora to share more about the solution, including their challenges, how they worked on finding a solution together with Google Cloud and Intel, and the great results they're delivering in healthcare. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to talk about the work we've been doing together to advance biomedical research for all. Our mission at the Broad Institute is to uncover the molecular basis of major human diseases, inform prevention, detection, treatments, and cures develop effective new approaches to diagnostics and therapeutics, and disseminate discoveries, tools, methods, and data openly to the entire scientific community. In the course of fulfilling this mission, we face many challenges, and the one I want to talk about today concerns the deluge of data that we've been experiencing in recent years. Extraordinary improvements in data generation technologies and plummeting costs over the past decade have led to a boom in the number of data sets that are being produced. It gives us an unprecedented opportunity to fuel scientific breakthroughs and deliver on the promise of precision medicine. Yet all that data is only useful if we can analyze it at scale collaboratively. The most immediate problem we face is that the computations we need to run on all this data are complex, to say the least. Every byte of data has to go through massive pipelines designed to squeeze out the useful information from the raw signal. The longer it takes for those pipelines to run, the more time we have to wait between generating the data and deriving actionable insights. And then there's the question of cost. Even when the cost of a single operation is small, these costs per job can add up to huge sums of money when we're looking at cohorts of hundreds of thousands of human genomes. Every extra cent that we spend on the pipeline that is not as efficient as it can be turns into a limitation on the scope of the research we can afford to undertake. But that's not all. Frankly, there's so much work to do to maximize the use of these data sets, and not enough brains in the game yet. We have to broaden the range of researchers who can effectively contribute to this work. It can't just be a handful of big established powerhouses. There are lots of really smart people throughout the world who could contribute so much more if only they had the right tools. So how do we overcome these challenges together? For the past five years or so, we've partnered with Intel through the Intel Broad Center for Genomic Data Engineering. It's been a wonderful collaboration that has produced robust solutions for accelerating our tools and pipelines. These have helped us take control of the flood of data, scale up our analyses, and make it cheaper to run them on the cloud. And as a complement to that work, we've been building a platform called Terra in partnership with Microsoft and Verily that enables us to put the power that these optimized tools deliver into the hands of just about any researcher on the planet. So let's talk about tools and pipelines. We use many different tools, but none so much as the Genome Analysis Toolkit, or GHK, which we develop in-house and make available to the research community as an open source package. It's probably the world's most widely used toolkit for identifying variants in genome sequencing data. We run it in the form of automated pipelines that will take a massive pile of raw sequence data and put it through several layers of transformation to extract the genomic variants. 
And those variants are what researchers ultimately care about for understanding human genetics, diagnosing diseases, and eventually designing strategies for treating or even eliminating those diseases. But all that processing is a lot of work. And there are some classic bottlenecks that for a long time really restricted our ability to scale up our analyses. Thankfully, our Intel collaborators developed optimized versions of some of the key algorithms involved, which now run faster on chips equipped with features like AVX512. We also see a general acceleration of processing with the latest generations of CPUs. For example, we recently performed some benchmarking that showed faster execution times on the second generation Xeon processors, again, with some really significant effects on classic bottlenecks like genome alignment and variant calling. And it's important to note that this is not just a case of buying a shorter runtime by doing the work in fancy hardware that costs more. When we ran the benchmarks on Google Cloud, comparing M1 and N2 instances, we see the N2 instances with the Xeon CPUs outperforming the N1s on both runtime and cost. So the pipelines were faster and cheaper to run. And that's admittedly a pretty good combination. If you want to learn more about that, check out the blog post linked at the bottom of the slide, which outlines the benchmarking protocol and our findings. So now let's talk about the cloud. I mentioned it's imperative that we get more brains into the game. And the cloud is an obvious way to increase access to large data sets and put more computational power into the hands of researchers across the world. But you can't just throw life scientists and physicians at the Google Cloud console. That's just asking too much of them. When you're specialized at that level, learning to use the cloud as is would be a whole nother job. And that's why we partnered with Microsoft and Verily to develop a platform called Terra that sits on top of the cloud infrastructure, packages all the relevant functionality in a form that's more immediately usable by researchers in the life sciences. The Terra platform provides applications and interfaces that are tailored to the needs and expectations of life scientists, and it connects together the data, tools, and computing resources needed to advance biomedical research. Importantly, since we're talking about human biomedical data, the entire platform operates according to stringent standards of security under the FedRAMP program. So a credentialed researcher can easily access the data sets they need and apply the tools they want securely and at scale. And they can share their work at any stage, either just with their collaborators or with the world in a form that makes their analysis completely reproducible and extensible. Yet it's not only about the researchers. Terra brings together a multitude of people and organizations with different roles to play. Funders, data generators, even patients who wish to donate their data to research, they want more researchers to be able to make use of their precious data. Meanwhile, tool developers want to make their tools available to the research community in a way that just works out of the box. Containerized tools, example data and preset configurations, and minimal amount of support burden. For example, all the optimized GHK tools and pipelines I mentioned earlier are available in Terra for anyone to use. That means any researcher in the world can take advantage of the Intel team's optimization work to run scalable analysis pipelines that are fast, cost-effective, and scientifically excellent. And that's where the impact of our collaborative problem solving is truly maximized. Let me give you one more example. We recently announced a new partnership with the Centers for Disease Control and a company called Theogen Genomics to enable every public health lab in the United States to use Terra to access, analyze, and share data about SARS-CoV-2. That means each of these dozens of labs, which are typically small and don't always have dedicated bioinformaticians on staff, will now be able to run optimized pipelines that are set up to work out of the box, efficiently, and at scale. And they'll be able to share and compare their data much faster without the confounding factors that come from using different sets of tools. We had already been working in this way with a subset of states with very encouraging results. So we're excited to work with the CDC to roll this out across the country, particularly as we head into what could be a difficult fall and winter season for the fight against COVID. Finally, I want to emphasize that Terra is not a walled garden. It's a hub in an ecosystem of platforms, portals, and data repositories that are interconnected through open source standards that we like to think of as a data biosphere. And it's in that same spirit of connectedness that we recently launched the Eric and Wendy Schmidt Center 
which will bring together a global and collaborative network across academia and industry to promote interdisciplinary research between data and life sciences in order to transform biology and ultimately improve human health. If you'd like to join us in the brave new world of genomics in the cloud, please visit terra.bio and take the Intel Accelerated GTK Pipelines for a spin, or browse the preloaded workspace in the Terra Showcase to find other use cases that might interest you. You can also pick up a copy of my O'Reilly book, Genomics in the Cloud, if you'd like a step-by-step, hands-on introduction to this fascinating and fast-expanding field. And with that, I thank you for your attention. I wish you a great rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vonda Ora. This is such a great example of how we can apply technology to solve some of the world's most complex problems. Thank you for choosing Intel and Google on such an important project. I'd also like to thank Thomas Curian and his GCP leadership team for their continued support of our strategic alliance and for the opportunity to speak at Google Next 2021. I'm looking forward to doing more amazing things together. Have a great event, everybody.